today I want to talk about equipment, especially homebrew gear. Frequency agility, absolutely important, whether it's a VFO, DDS or VXO, it doesn't matter. You just need to cover the whole band or close to it. Crystal controlled rigs belong in the bin. <laughs> Secondly, you've got to be on the right frequency. That implies frequency agility, but it also means you understand the relationship between your transmit and receive frequency, especially important for homebrew direct conversion gear. That has implications for the circuitry in your transceiver, as you need some sort of offset circuit. Even if it's manual like this, you have to zero beat the station that you're listening to every time he puts it over for you to transmit. Otherwise, you'll probably be out of his receive pass band, especially if he's using a CW filter. Even better is automatic frequency offset, as done on this split frequency rig. If you're at a given capacitance, you can obtain a frequency shift, but your frequency shift range will be different at the top and the bottom end of the VXO. You might add Verac to diodes, but they'll probably sacrifice shift. So, go with what I've got, which is two variable capacitors, one for transmit, one for receive, and switched by a relay. This tuning capacitor controls the receiver. To net into a signal, you press the spot button and adjust the transmit tuning capacitor for zero beat. Release it and you have a frequency offset. Your chosen frequency offset can be anything. This rig operates split frequency. And it's direct conversion and a problem with direct conversion is you may have interference on one side of the received signal. With this set, you dodge it just by tuning through the carrier and out the other side. And your transmit frequency is, is exactly the same. It's almost as good as having two VFOs. And very, very simple. I'm surprised more people don't use it. Do you fish much remote at all? Oh, no, no, not really. Not it's really? just a radio antenna. Oh, is it? Oh, okay. so, yeah. Fishing rod? Yeah, it's actually a fishing rod as well. It's a giant squid pole. It's yeah. nine metres tall. Oh, okay, cool. Then there's timing, absolutely critical. You need to be transmitting when the other guy is listening and no one else is calling. That requires being able to discern those moments, especially after a bit of confusion, when you can insert your call sign and be in the clear. That requires being able to go from receive to transmit very quickly, preferably without flicking a switch. Best is full break-in, when you can monitor the frequency in between the characters you're sending. So to summarise, a practical minimum QRP transceiver must have adequate power output, say 1 or 2 watts, maybe a bit more. It must cover the whole band you want to operate on, and it must have a good frequency offset. Full break-in is preferred, but a minimum of one switch to change over. If you pay attention to those things in your homebrew designs, you'll have a rig that you'll enjoy making contacts on and not one just to put up on the shelf and never use again.